Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Um, so today's going to be a short, I think it's going to be a short video. Uh, there's not much news going on in Bitcoin. Um, there's only the Ethereum news going on right now with uh, with the Ethereum EIP uh, 3554. Um, what that means, we're going to explain that a little bit. Uh, we're also going to talk about Coinbase and Apple Pay. And then eventually Coinbase is going to accept Google Pay as well. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we also had a request yesterday from a uh, somebody that was watching uh, to do a deep dive on bit farms. I looked into the data a little bit yesterday on their miners. Um, it's a little hard to get. I'm going to try a little harder uh, today and tomorrow to get it. Hopefully I'll have something out for you guys within the next uh, couple of days uh, if I can find the data on it obviously. Um, so let's get into the sticks here. Uh, here we go. So Bitcoin right now is trading at 40,600, 611 roughly. Uh, we've had a nice run up in the last uh, day again. We had, we're kind of on a roller coaster ride again. Uh, we're up, we're down, we're up, uh, but we're up obviously, which is good news. And then if we're looking at the daily moving averages, uh, the green line here is the 50 day moving average, the blue line is the 200 day moving average. And it looks like we're getting close to also going into the Golden Cross. Uh, the golden cross is significant because it always means we have a rally afterwards for, uh, for the most part. Once the green line, you know, uh, crosses the 200 day moving line, the 50 day crosses the 200 day line, we usually have a spike. If we look back here, last time this happened was back in um, May of 20. And you can see the major bull run that we had. So we crossed here, which we were at around 7,960. And we crossed, crossed it there, and then we went all the way up, obviously, to a high of 60,000. So we're expecting a nice rally to begin in the next couple of days, two weeks, when this happens. The 50-day moves across the 200-day, and that's obviously going to be really exciting. I think from there, I think we might be going up to 150,000 in Bitcoin price, uh, as long as there isn't a lot of FUD in, on the market uh, with bad news and all the fun stuff that we have to deal with in the crypto space. Uh, let's go back to the four-hour chart here. Uh, Dogecoin is trading right now at 19 cents, almost 20 cents. It's at 1997. It is still below the 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, the 50-day is still back there. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. It's obviously trading the same kind of pattern that Bitcoin is. Uh, if we look at Stellar, Stellar is trading at uh, 27 cents. It is also below the 50 day and then the 200 days up here. So looks like we might, uh, doesn't look like it. I mean, we crossed it here. Uh, I don't think we're gonna cross uh, the 50 day with the 200 day anytime soon here. At least not within the next couple of weeks. Uh, Litecoin, Litecoin similar situation as well. It is trading at $144 this morning. Um, we are above the 50 day moving line here and below obviously the 200 day. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it as well. It's gonna take a while for that to cross. Uh, Cardano, Cardano is above the 50 day moving average. We don't have the 200 day average because on this chart we only see, uh, yeah, we only see from March 21st of this year. Uh, so that's why we don't have the 200 day moving chart on this one. But it is above the 50-day moving average, which is good, and it's trading at $1.36, $1.37 almost. And this one is kind of trading opposite of, uh, bit, uh, let's see, on the four-hour chart. And yeah, no, it's following the pattern of Bitcoin as well. Uh, take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum obviously is above its 50-day moving average. Uh, we had the, we never actually really crossed, it looks like. Uh, never had the death cross with uh, Ethereum. The 50 day never went below the 200 day, so we're still above it. So it looks like we're still in a good bull trend. We'll talk more about Ethereum, obviously, and what the ramifications are of the update that just happened this week on the network. And Ethereum is trading at uh, $2,738. Uh, let's take a quick look at, we talked about Hybe earlier this week. Uh, I do have some coins or coins, shares in Hive. Uh, let's see here, that's on the four hour day. And it's trading uh, 293 right now. Uh, at the close yesterday, pre-market is 295, so it's up a little bit pre-market. And then we also talked about uh, Marathon Digital. 
Marathon Digital is trading at 31.46. It is above the 50-day uh, and the 200-day moving averages, and it is up pre-market. Uh, what is that? Uh, 20 cents. 20 cents pre-market. So I think both Hive and Mara are going to do really well in this market, especially if Bitcoin continues to go up. You're going to see large price appreciation in the stocks. Unlike anything else that's uh, minor related, they always follow the cryptocurrency market. Uh, market cryptocurrency market goes up, they go up as well. I think uh, Mara could go up to $250 easily this year. Uh, by the end of the year, as long as Bitcoin goes up to you know, hundred hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. Hive, same thing. I'm thinking Hive could go probably easily. Oh, to uh, twenty thirty dollars, possibly even forty dollars, depending on the price uh, and depending on when their miners get installed this year. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, let's jump into the news. So Ethereum mining will soon be obsolete as London update moves key deadline to December. So this is a pretty long article. We'll go, get into it really quick here. We'll try to make this quick. Uh, uh, someone buried in the Ethereum's big software uh, makeover that rolled out Thursday is a code update known as Ethereum Improvement Proto uh, Proposal 3554 or EIP 3554 for short. It threatens to hasten the end of Ethereum mining as we know it. Um, and we've known about this for a long time, that this is going to be coming down the pipe. Um, a lot of the miners have been uh, preparing for this. Um, I also do mine some Ethereum, um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. If that happens, obviously we'll have to switch over to mining something else that's uh, compatible with GPU mining, so we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, since its launch, the Ethereum community has talked about overhauling the way that it mints Ether, which is the token associated with the Ethereum blockchain, but getting people to make the change is going to require a push, and that push is something known as a difficulty bomb. It's a mechanism in Ethereum that makes it exponentially harder to mine, said Tom Bieko, the coordinator for the Ethereum protocol developers. It's like we're artificially adding miners on the network, which raises the difficulty, making it harder for every other miner that's on the network to actually mine a block. Uh, EIP 3554 moves on the detonation date on that, uh, of that difficulty bomb by six months to December. Uh, once it goes off, it will essentially make the Ethereum unminable. A lot of people we're guessing that this might happen within the next year or two. It looks like it's going to happen a lot faster. So uh, I know there's a couple of miners, uh, Ethereum, or not Ethereum, uh, Mara and Hive, I'm, I know for sure, are mining uh, Ethereum currently. So we'll see if they're going to start staking it and then uh, if they're going to move on to different coins like Ethereum Classic or something else or uh, Zcash. Uh, not Zcash, um, there's another one. I can't think of the name right now. Ethereum 2.0, cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum and Bitcoin regularly get flack for the process of mining, which is how new coins are generated. Both currently use a so-called proof-of-work mining model, where machines solve complex math equations to create new coins. This makes it possible for any centralized body to create new coins arbitrarily. There's no equivalent of the central government to print new dollars, which crypto enthusiasts believe has helps preserve the value of these cryptocurrencies. Um, and that is the case. Uh, you know, with Bitcoin, you have a set limit of 21 million coins. With the U.S. government, it's unlimited. Print as you will. However, this effort requires significant energy to power the computers used to perform the calculations, which has drawn criticism from outsiders concerned about energy shortages and carbon emissions. Um, and that has been, you know, all the fud that we've had recently in the past couple of months with Elon Musk and uh, stopping and accepting Bitcoin on with Teslas because that was concerned with the high output of uh, carbon emissions, especially from dirty, dirty miners using coal, coal power plants. The Ethereum community has uh, coalesced around the idea of migrating from the proof of work to proof of stake, which requires users to leverage their existing cash of Ether as, Ether as a means to verify transactions and mint new tokens. This will still limit the amount of new uh, co coin created, but without requiring the energy used to run massive banks of computers to solve math equations. Uh, Bayco tells CNBC the original proposal required these so-called validators to have 1,500 Ether, a stake now worth around 4.2 million. Obviously, if you require that many coins to be staked, you're limiting the amount of, uh, basically, validators on the network, so it's going to be hard for the numbers to grow. So they're going to talk about here lowering that, which is good. 
<coughs> excuse me. Uh, to lower the barrier to entry, the new proof of stake proposal would require interested users to have only 32 or about 90,000 ether. It's still a high sum. I think it would be better to have maybe 10,000. Uh, that's just me. It makes it a little bit <coughs> more easier for the average user to be able to participate in this as well. Having 90,000 is still a lot of money for a lot of people. Um, you know, we could possibly sell the miners that we have mining Ethereum and we wouldn't be even close to that. Um, unless we held on to all the ether that we have uh, for the next six months, maybe we could, maybe, maybe we could uh, be able to stake. It's still not a tr uh, tribal sum, but it is much more accessible system, said Baco. Since December 2020, the Ethereum community has been testing out proof of stake workflow on a ch uh, chain called Beacon. Uh, though proof of stake has been the plan for Ethereum since the onset, developers have pushed back the rollout because they had seen serious flaws in previous implementations. Beacon solves these problems according to Baco. Uh, he said, we knew that there would be a lot of technical work to address things like increased uh, centralization that we that we see in other proof of stake systems. He said, we, we've achieved that with Beacon Chain where, where there's one or two orders of magnitude more validators than any other proof of stake network. Okay, so that's actually good. <clears throat> the concern obviously is if the staking requirement is too high, you're going to have a lot less people joining in and on staking them because they just don't have the coins to stake. Um, so lowering that does help. I believe that's a good thing. I think they could probably lower it down maybe to even 50 or 25,000 or something like that, which would make it even better. I hope. At least I, I think so. Uh, migrating the entire Ethereum ecosystem to Beacon and up here being dubbed Ethereum 2.0 is the next step in the process. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting everyone on board with the move is where the difficulty bomb becomes significant. Um, Ice Age. This is the first time in Ethereum's history that a difficulty bomb has detonated. No, this isn't the first time it has detonated. It's happened a few times, including in 2017, 2019, and again last year. When a difficulty bomb detonates, it floods the system with artificial miners, driving up the mining difficulty. And that means new blocks will appear more and more slowly on the network. If you increase the difficulty really, really quickly, it's just not profitable for new miners, uh, explained Baco. But each time it's gone off, the community has reset the clock in order to bring the difficulty back down to normal levels. While you don't need a bomb to go off to roll out proof of stake mining, it certainly helps move things along by closing the on-ramp to proof of work mining. Baco called it, calls it more of a stopgap measure. Um, and that's that's true. I mean, as long as miners have miners are profitable mining Ethereum, they're going to do it. So if you make it un, unprofitable for them, they're going to get off and stop mining it, and they're going to go to something else. In essence, the point of the difficulty bomb is to force miners and node operators to upgrade their software after a predetermined amount of time has passed, according to Nick Carter, Castle Island Ventures' general partner and CoinMetrics co-founder. In December, if the, de if the deadline for detonation isn't pushed back, the bomb will go off, and you'll see another parabolic rise in difficulty, <clears throat> like the ones, you've, ones pictured in the uh, chart above, but this time the de developers won't be re rewinding the clock. It will be the start of Ethereum's proof of work ice age. Obviously, not everyone's happy. While the upgrade to Ethereum 2.0 has a lot of backers, not everyone is happy about the change. There are some miners who are against it, but it's it's in their financial interest to be against it. Uh, and that's correct. I mean, you know, a lot of the guys that do mine it spent hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on their equipment, so now they're having to change uh, to different uh, coins or do something else with their equipment. I think Hive is going into uh, computing with their uh, GPUs, um, so we'll see what happens. There's options obviously out there for miners to uh, do something else with them. Uh, there's a lot of other chains that support GPU-based mining, so miners could simply choose to start mining other cryptocurrencies. They could also decide to shut down mining operations entirely and sell their mining equipment. Uh, Baco expects to see a lot of that, so do I. I think a lot of the small guys that were doing it from the house where they had a couple rigs, Mining it are going to start selling off uh, their GPU cards, so we're going to get a uh, market that's flooded with it. I think the prices of uh, those GPU cards are going to go, come down in price as well. Uh, we've had a lot of people complaining that uh, the gamers can't get the mining cards because all well, the miners are buying up the cards. We've also seen many mining farms and mining pools on Ethereum start to get into staking. That is true as well. We've seen mining pools use their profits to set up validators on Ethereum. We've also seen them... Uh, uh, offer pooling services for their users who might not have 32 Ether but still want to validate the network. 
So even if you don't have 90,000 parked uh, in Ether, you still might be able to keep some skin in the game. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So if you offer up a mining pool, if you put your uh, coins in there, and you're able to mine with the rest of, uh, not mine, but stake with a group of people. So if I have 10 Ether, somebody else has got 10 Ether, somebody else got 20, 30 Ethers, we're all able to combine those Ethers and stake it and get at least some profit for it, uh, for staking. So we'll see in the next six months. Obviously, this is planning to happen in December when the switch is going to happen or the uh, bomb is going to go off. Um, so it'll be interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on it. I'll keep you guys posted on that. All right, let's get into the next story here. This is a quick one here. Coinbase enables crypto buys with Apple Pay, instant 100,000 cash out, Google Pay to follow. This is great. Then anything you can do to make um, buying crypto easier with uh, services that people are already using, like Apple Pay, Google Pay, it just makes it so much more likely that they're going to be able to invest and spend that, uh, that cash or that cryptocurrencies. Uh, Nasdaq listed cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has enabled crypto buys with Apple Pay and instant cash outs of up to 100,000 per transaction. The company will also soon enable crypto buys with Google Pay. Uh, crypto exchange Coinbase announced Thursday that users can now buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on its platform with Apple Pay. Parkash, I'm going to butcher his name, I'm sorry, uh, Haramini, senior director of Coinbase Payments and Financial Hub, explained. We're introducing new and seamless ways to enable crypto buys with linked debit cards to Apple Pay and Google Pay and instant cash outs up to uh, 100,000 per transaction available at 24-7. Coinbase detailed, if you already have a Visa or MasterCard debit card link to, in your Apple wallet, Apple Pay will automatically appear as a payment method when you're buying crypto with Coinbase on an, an Apple Pay supported iOS device or Safari web browser. The announcement added that U.S. customers can also buy cryptocurrencies with connected bank accounts via ACH or wire transfer, a debit card, or funds in their Coinbase USD wallets. In June, the company announced that the selected users could use Coinbase card with Apple Pay and Google Pay. In contrast, Thursday's announcement indicates that users no longer need to have a Coinbase card to use Apple Pay. That's great. That's a good thing. That's going to lead to more adoption, uh, more usage possibly. Noting that the company is expanding its global footprint, Coinbase reiterated that it is now accept, accepts crypto buys via linked Visa, uh, Visa and MasterCard debit and credit in 20 plus countries, with more on the way. Furthermore, the global crypto exchange revealed later this fall you'll be able to buy crypto with Google Pay, a safe, simple, and secure way to pay that's used by more than 150 million people in 40 countries every month. Wow. Okay, that's actually good. Uh, and then they're just asking, would you buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with Apple Pay on Coinbase? Let us know in the comments. Ah, da, da, da. Okay. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, let me know what you think about Ethereum. Um, obviously, fork coming up, the fork that happened, um, what it means for the miners. If you're a miner, what are you going to do with it? Um, and then are you going to use your Apple Pay or Google Pay card to buy crypto on Coinbase? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if there's any stories you'd like me to cover or anything like that. Uh, this is went on a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, I was thinking it's going to be maybe 15 minutes, but it looks like we're at 20 minutes or so. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. And until next time, bye.